the YouTube, it's Brad Phillips. Marlin by Eros. We have a lot of people that have asked about beginner EDFs, okay? And we've recommended a bunch of different planes over the years. And there's a lot of them that are good to choose from, but this one here may be one of the best. And here's why. It's inexpensive, it's easy to fly, and it's got flaps. Can you ask for more? Take off flaps, here we go. We're gonna taxi up, 64 millimeter going into the wind. There we go, off the ground, baby. Woo! I went into safe because I was trying to retract my landing gear. <laughs> did you see how close I came oh, to the power line? I did. <laughs> So this is on 4S, 3300. This is an Arrows battery. Just rock solid flight performance, folks. We're running an AR630 in this plane. Into the flaps, watch this thing slow down, watch it. Watch it slow down going downhill, slowing down. Like I put the brakes on, they'll fly right by. Oh, trademark. Terrible looking landing, but it's on the ground. And we're gonna make it into a touch and go so I can hide behind it. Yeah, baby. So you guys may have noticed one thing about that landing is that it was terrible. <laughs> Got a little bit of wind going today. Oh yeah, baby. That's a four ass plane, folks. We are with wind on that pass. Okay, full landing flaps. Watch it slow down going downhill. Okay, camera crew, you wanna go back about four steps toward the garage. There you go, perfect. Take off flaps now this time, a little bit of throttle. Full landing flaps. Woo, 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 woo. Sorry for all of the uh, speakers I just blew <laughs> I was out. They were a bit of noise warning at the beginning. Here we go. Take off flaps. So folks, I really like flying for you. Oh, hey, let's show the people just how much of a flyover territory we're in. Watch this guys. There's one. There's two, three, four. Five, manned aircraft at 2,500 feet. I should probably not fly over that direction. Did you see the bird come out of the tree? That was yeah. cool. So anyway, we're in flyover territory here. If you come and visit us, you'll probably have to uh, fly past us to get here. Just kidding. Oh, five. There's, no. <laughs> there's one behind there's, us. Six. Yeah. <laughs> at least. Oh, there's two in that same frame of vision. Okay, 10% throttle. Look at that wind. Man, do you see the shadow mm, go down the tree? Yeah. Okay, full landing flaps here. Watch that wind, watch that wind. Whoa, yeah, baby. That, that is a 20 foot rollout, folks. Beautiful landing, by the way. I was happy, proud of that one. Out of the flaps altogether. Look at this. Almost unlimited vertical, but not quite. Flattening out just like they would in an airliner. <laughs> Boy, if you ever watch them take off, they go so steep because they want them out of that airspace as fast as possible. Wake turbulence. If you guys don't know what wake turbulence is, it's the turbulence that comes off the wings similar to the wake on a boat. And it continues out. It intensifies differently than in water. But it's still kind of the same concept. Okay, 15%, 30%, 20%, watch this. Oh yeah! Take off flaps. So now why is this a good beginner plane, folks? Because you have four five channel control which would be elevator, rudder, aileron, and flaps, baby. Woo! Without the complexity of landing gear. Landing gear, add weight and complexity. Full landing flaps. Let's see if we can take this landing here. Whoa, whoa, oh, yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. But this plane is very forgiving, as you can see from my terrible landings. Hasn't tipped over once. Tried to, but those gear are very wide and very fixed. And Full it, throttle still. Watch this guys. This is the Arrows battery test. Yeah, baby, eagle killing zone there behind us. Still full throttle, still full throttle, still full throttle, still full throttle. This is the way a lot of you new flyers fly. Full throttle until it blows up in a million pieces. Okay, out of the <laughs> throttle. Take off flaps. I hear a manned aircraft over my right shoulder. I'm just gonna go double check. Look at that bird over there. What is that? Oh, it's. A, it's a goose. It's a goose. Go, 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 go. Get out of my flight space. There's gonna be somebody that makes a comment on that. 
I'm just waiting for it. I can't wait to see it. It's gonna be hilarious. The goose that you were like 150 feet Watch from? this guy, he's about, he's about 2,000 feet. Oh, yeah, Yield to manned aircraft, folks, seriously. It is our number one priority when we fly radio controlled airplanes because radio controlled airplanes do not have human beings inside. And we care about humans, we don't wanna hurt them. We were told when we came to this planet <laughs> that we had to comply with that rule. <laughs> oh yeah, baby. Okay, that was my timer and we're probably getting close. Yes, the manned aircraft is passed. They're definitely at high altitude. And by the way, there's a reason the FAA requires us to fly below 400 feet, even though it used to be 500 feet, even though it used to be whatever you want because it's never been a problem before in the history of time. But it is now all of a sudden because some jack who and a freaking drone did something stupid and hit some military aircraft that they flew to the ground perfectly without hurting anybody. Up and over. Oh yeah, baby. Take off flaps. Tighten the radius, even though I didn't need to. It makes it really fun. A little bit tighter radius. Woo! <laughs> okay, we are at 30% uh, throttle. Take off flaps deployed, landing flaps coming in. A lot of turbulence over the top of those trees, folks. You may not realize it, but look how beautiful that is. It's so gorgeous. Oh yeah, we aren't even gonna touch it. We're just gonna pretend like we're gonna touch it. Oh yeah. Ooh, we are losing the juice. We are. This thing is juicy fruit, juicy fruit. You guys remember juicy fruit? I do. Of course. You can still buy it. But they used to have the most amazing commercials in the 80s when we were growing up. They are kind of getting to be old farts these days. True. Oh, I'm thinking a double mint, sorry. Same brand. Take off flaps. Folks, if you wanna to learn to fly, start learning today. The way you learn to fly is you get one of the beginner planes that we recommend. They're not super expensive, but they are definitely more expensive than you probably think they should be until you get into the hobby and realize that they're very expensive. And then you'll be like, thank goodness Brian watched out for me. When you buy that plane, you'll be supporting our channel so we can bring you more footage about all this stuff that you don't want your wife to find out about, even though it flies through the air. And when you're ready to come out of the closet and let your wife know how much money you actually spent, <laughs> we have a big forest in the back for you to hide in. <laughs> Did you hear the beeping? Yeah. Oh crap, dead stick landing with the wind. You know what? Check this out. Out of the throttle, we're gonna do Primera. Hey, 14 steps back to the garage. I can't see you. I'm not paying attention. Yep. Okay, take off flaps, making my base leg, using the rudder to keep the nose down and flying the plane. Okay, we have throttle reserves now. Full landing flaps coming in. Oh yeah, baby! Woohoo! That was two minutes 54, 55, 56, 57, 58. 59, that's three minutes past five is eight. And it's mm -hmm. beeping, because it's dead. Yes. Not totally dead. See, look. Pretty dead. That's why I got out of the throttle, because I wanted a little burst at the end. You need the burst at the end to finish the job. Right. You may be already aware of this. But anyway, if you're flying EDS on the way to final, you need to reserve a little bit of power. So what I did was I got the altitude, I tightened my turns, I got out of the full landing flaps. I got into the takeoff flaps only after I got on the final because I was with wind. I wanted to preserve altitude. Then I got over here and I got into my base leg, pointed the nose downhill, takeoff flaps. Some of this comes from knowing the plane. We've only flown this plane three times, okay? Takeoff flaps on the way down, or not three, four times, something like that, oh three or four God. times. Yeah. So full landing flaps only after I was in full alignment and I had reserved with 0% throttle allowed that voltage to build back up just a hair. So I've got that burst. And remember, when they're near dead like this, there's not as much burst and it takes longer to come on. So let's pause. Okay, so we paused so I could run like a weirdo. 3.25, 2 2.65, 3.46, 3.26, 12.6 volts, okay? This thing did its job. OK, 
Okay, listen, watch. Let's count to how many seconds we get of thrust. Wow, not even one, <laughs> two, three, four, five. Six. That's dead, yeah. guys. That's dead, okay? Throttle cuts on. So, <clears throat> when you see me fly to eight minutes on a 3300 arrows, that should teach you something. Don't fly to eight minutes <laughs> unless you wanna do dead stick landings. And by the way, there was a period in there where I was on the throttle for probably 35 to 40 seconds 100% throttle, no backing off on the throttle. A lot of you that are new pilots tend to use too much throttle. It is a common practice when you're new because throttle and power and speed save lives, mm -hmm. okay? If you fly fast, you don't stall. But remember, the best thing you can do as you learn to fly is to learn how the plane stalls and what sort of warnings you get. This plane gives you huge warnings, huge some of the best, they're perfect warnings, okay? <laughs> so if you're flying this and you get a perfect, perfect warning, then you know it's gonna stall. So Johnny on the spot, elevator down, Johnny on the spot, rudder left, Johnny on the spot, rudder right, whatever direction you needed to do to get that nose down and on the throttle, or on the throttle sufficient to get going. You can actually fly out of a stall with this plane. In a real plane, you don't have that power to weight ratio. So when you get ready to stall, you have to fly into it. Otherwise you're gonna lose control because then you have nothing over the flight surfaces until it falls in such a way that you can get it to spin. So that's what you gotta do. It's not as hard as it looks, but it's hard when you're new because you're still sitting here thinking left, right, what, up, down, oh shoot, what control surface, what stick? Some of this stuff comes with time. I'm seriously, you don't believe me now if you're a new pilot, promise you. I don't even think about what direction I'm going. Mm -hmm. It just happens. Yeah. It's weird. I mean, it's seriously weird because I have trouble with left and right. I was dyslexic as a kid. I still have trouble with left and right when they're giving me instructions on the powered paraglider. So that being said, beautiful, really fun plane. Great entry level choice if you're talking about an EDF. Now I'm not saying this isn't good for somebody that's got some skill, maybe a little bit more expertise. I enjoy flying it by far, however, I'm not a huge fan of fixed gear. I don't like taking them off, but you can take them off and you can belly land this thing with the best of them. Just keep in mind, look at those controls. Mm -hmm. They're ball joints, they're strong, but it's still gonna wear and tear on this aircraft. So if you decide to pull the gear and you wanna fly it a lot, get yourself a pop bottle or something and cut it and then just glue those suckers down there and you can protect each of them. Same thing here, once this is unscrewed, you can take this off. You still get your rudder for yaw control and yes, I use the rudder all the time on every plane I have a rudder on. <clears throat> if I don't have a rudder, I feel like I'm in less control. We just flew a plane earlier. I don't know when the videos are gonna publish, but it didn't have a rudder and it's a very good plane. But the thing is, it would be a better plane with a rudder. Oh, sorry, my timer was going back off because I gave it throttle to show you how much it was dead. Oh, yeah. So in closing, eight minutes of flight time is, <laughs> I mean, I'm talking eight minutes to the stop. So you're probably looking at about seven minutes on this 3300 uh, 4S from Arrows. That's a pretty good flight time. And it's not puffed. It's not puffed or anything. It so. is cold too. Yeah, it's cold right now. Cold does not help batteries. Although we're probably in the operating range of this battery because we're about like 30, 30-ish 30 30 degrees Fahrenheit. So for those of you that, uh, you know, don't know what 30 degrees Fahrenheit is, uh, look at Google <clears throat> and type 30 degrees Fahrenheit to Celsius. But just keep in mind, in Fahrenheit, we have like lots of stupid, weird, random numbers, and you guys have like nice, big, like boiling at 100 degrees yeah. Celsius. You know, like sense. that's convenient. Or zero is freezing. Oh, that's convenient. We're like, you know, freezing's at 32. Let's just throw it in the middle of the range to confuse people. What's boiling? Like 280? 212. 212? Yeah, 212. She used to teach home ec. So anyway, except they call it something different now. What do they call Failing it? Failing consumer Oh, that's right. You did that for 10 years as yes. a professional. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> guys. This is a good plane. If you're looking for a beginner plane, and by the way, I get inundated with the same question a million times, and I'm gonna try to answer this question. So if you need more clarification, please do ask, but give me some boundaries. I can't say it like, what's your favorite plane, Brian? I'm not gonna even answer. No. I have uh, so many planes, I like them all for different reasons. That's like saying, pick your favorite kid. Everybody has a favorite kid. They just don't tell people about <laughs> it, right? So here's the thing. If you're looking at picking a plane and you wanna know what my favorite plane is, it's probably not the same as what your favorite plane is. Yeah. So it is, it's irrelevant. That's like saying, what are your expo settings, Brian? 
And I'm like, we'll just watch what I did in the radio setup, which is on the Unbox Build radio setup. The first video for this, we go over all that, okay? So you can watch it in great detail. This is a second thought, so you're gonna see what the flight characteristics are like. We're gonna give you some new insights uh, that we found. By the way, secondly, I just wanna say the flaps on this thing are great. They work really good. It's effective to slow the plane down, even with a bigger battery. Yes, you could probably fly this on a 2200, but I wouldn't recommend it. I would do it on a bigger pack, you get more flight time. A three minute flight time on a jet for me is just barely enough to get up there and start doing anything fun. And if you're like me, you're gonna blow your load all at the beginning. Yep. You're gonna get into the throttle. <laughs> you're gonna get into the throttle and you're just gonna blow it everywhere. And then you're gonna be like, oh crap, dead stick landing at two and a half minutes when I had a three minute timer. It's happened to me before and I don't want it to happen to you. So you have to reserve yourself a little bit. I mean, you're playing battery, okay? So that being said, five minutes is a lot better than three minutes, I've heard. So look at this thing, beautiful. Air intakes are great. Love the looks of it. It looks like a Futura. And yes, you guys keep comparing this to other planes. I agree. It is kind of like an in-between on a couple of different um, airplanes that have been released in the last, let's call it seven to 10 years, okay? That's not unusual. That's just the way the uh, hobby industry is. But I think this is a great balance of quality, strength, solidness, ease of construction. This was so easy to put together. Easy. Three screws, four screws, you're done. No glue. That's a great thing, guys. The hobby industry. I know it doesn't seem like it sometimes, because we complain about the same things. Why don't we have voltage telemetry on this stuff? Because they're competitive brands, people. I don't know what to tell you. I wish there was too. Why don't we have telemetry modules like this that you can buy for cheap? You can plug it in and then you can get your telemetry here. Why not, Horizon? Hmm? So anyway, just saying, guys, there's a lot to come, but the hobby industry is responding to our demands. You gotta remember, it might take them two and a half years to produce this model. So if you're complaining now, the response to your complaint is not gonna happen for like two years. And then if you throw COVID in the middle of it, it's gonna be like four years. If you're lucky, maybe 10 years if you're unlucky. So anyway, as we recover as a world from this um, wonderful thing that happened, whatever, whatever you wanna call it, um, remember, it's going to take a few years to get caught up from stuff. I think we're on the path to recovery. And so if you're thinking about flying, there has never been a better wake up call to get off of the couch and get outside and do something fun than what we all just went through for the last two years, watching people that we love die. Okay. Get out and do it now. Don't wait until you're five years older. Don't wait until you get a car accident and you hurt your right arm and you no longer have control of your, le your left thumb or whatever stupid thing happens to you. You get your leg stuck in a machine and you, know, you can't fly anymore for some stupid reason, which by the way, with one leg, you can still fly, I've heard. Um, so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to encourage you in a way that is also no BS because that's what we do here on Brian Phillips RC. We show you the planes. We bring you the real situation because we're not here trying to hype this up like, this is the best plane ever, biggest, fastest, whatever. No, that's not the way it is. Not every plane is the best plane in the history of time. That's not the way it is. This is a great plane, it's very fun. Are there better planes? Absolutely. And yes, you can get them from Arrows. But that being said, this is a pretty good plane for a beginner. It meets specific criteria, which is the way that they designed it because they knew that you had money in your wallet and they wanted to get it. And they were like, hey, I can give you this phone and you give me that money. <laughs> That's the way business works. And this plane is good. And it is good if you're a new pilot. Second, third plane, yes, yes, I know. But you need to get the right receiver. And do not cheap out and get a receiver without stabilization. You see where our receiver is? You see how nice that is? Mm -hmm. See how nice that looks? This installation was a breeze. Yep. We'll show you exactly how to do it. And by the way, yes, those receivers are pretty expensive, but you get all the technology you need to find success, and that's the key. Stack the odds in your favor. It is not easy to fly when you're new, okay? We're here to help you. Anyway, have I missed anything? I think you got it Should all. we give any other parenting advice? <laughs> We're super qualified for that. <laughs> we do have a lot of kids. So anyway, guys, the Marlin by Arrows. Great plane, great company to work with. We really have been super honored to have such a great group of companies to work with, and when we bring you stuff like this, 
of course, we're going we're gonna to talk about them because they've been good to us. And I think they've been good to you. And we hear about it a lot. So believe me, we hear all the bad stories. Everybody shares what went wrong and the dead on arrival they got from this company or that. Because we understand that that does happen. Believe me, we are in the hobby too. <laughs> it happens to us and we share it on our footage. But at the end of the day, some of the best companies are the ones that we work with and we are super honored to be serving you and not necessarily them or maybe mutually. Either way, we're really glad to be working with Eros and the other brands like Spectrum, Horizon Hobby, you know, Banggood, Amazon, what other companies? Into the AM, T-shirts, RTL fasteners. All these companies help make this possible, but you guys are really what move it. So if you wanna help support us, the easiest way is to buy this plane if you like it, or that plane. It doesn't matter what plane. Just buy something, get in the air, start flying. You're not paying any premium for it, but we do get a small commission from these companies that we affiliate ourselves with, and we appreciate you guys doing that. If you can't buy from our affiliates and you wanna still support us, there's PayPal and Patreon, but we really feel like the best deal is just buy the stuff you're gonna buy anyway. Ask us a question, use us as a service. We wanna add value to your life, and we think we're doing that. So if we are, give us a like and come back for more. We promise there is a ton coming. You wouldn't believe it. Last year, I heard about so much stuff that I wish I could talk about that didn't happen because there's some stinking container on some stinking ship sitting at some stinking port because some stinking fool's in charge of it. Yep. So anyway, that's my thoughts. Thanks for watching, guys.